Hello viewers I am with another of episodes of my interviews with the exclusive personalities from Pakistan Army and Pakistan Air Force and as you know I always come up with the excellent officers who have actually served with the Pakistan Army or with the Pakistan Air Force I have today with me a fighter pilot he has served the Pakistan Air Force uh, in the past I am talking about Fahad Masood he is a well known face he is always on the move uh, when it comes to international media he is representing Pakistan he is highlighting Pakistan's narratives he is a well known face on uh, Pakistani media as well we are lucky to have you sir pleasure being here sir rafael 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 everyone is talking about in india right now and i think they need to know it what is the reality behind it and how would you rate the plane uh well first and foremost let's give the devil its due it is a 4.5 gen aircraft with all the strike packages and the avionics packages on board but it is as uh, one of our dg ispr said it is not a surprise we have seen it operate across the globe uh, may it be in mali qatar uh, well they they're flying with qatar air force as well as egypt air force they have been employed in mali in libya as well as uh, afghanistan well to be very candid a lot of people take it as a combat proven aircraft in my opinion mm -hmm, no it's not a combat proven aircraft there is no adversary nor uh, neither in um, libya nor uh, afghanistan and nor mali no air defense element uh, nothing that uh, negates or counters uh, an uh, an uh, attacking aircraft with its uh, air defense element um, no aircraft in the in the air forces so in my opinion um, it is nothing new everyone knows it its background starts or dates back to about uh, 1997 initially and then incursion into both uh, the french air force and the naval uh, arm uh, is 2004 2006 time frame it's improved in versions and times to come and as we progress into this uh, talk i will certainly give you uh, intricate details of the version that's come across uh with the india as well the five jets which uh, everybody's been harping about uh, that we have the best aircraft in the subcontinent in the region um i have my reservations on that sir very important question we uh, go back to february 2019 we know that post february 2019 uh, uh prime minister modi he kept on saying that if we had rafael the things would have been different i want to ask you you being someone who has served as a fighter pilot at your best what difference could have uh, you know rafael made if we specifically look at the time frame uh, this deal was struck or under process or on the cards as we call it from 2012 till it really materialized a few uh, few days or a week or a couple of weeks back uh and since 2012 till 2020 it's 8 years uh as the pakistan air force and i've been referring to this uh, in, in at different forums we have always fought outnumbered in specific uh if i go take it back to the history that 313 number is very very important in the islamic history paradigm as well we have always been we have always fought out numbered so in this bargain as well uh, we have tacticians at play we have uh, the institutes uh, within uh, the organization of paf who are continuously in a process of evolution meaning thereby evolving tactics evolving stratagems uh, going into different domains which relate to air power employment and air power doctrine which we will be taking talking of a little while as well so in this one incident 2019 february um, which was obviously taken more of a as more of a stunt than anything else and uh, the only thing they shot down were a couple of our pine trees which are very uh, dear to us in pakistan uh, 
they lost out two of their jets, one MiG-21 with uh, Nandu and the other one, the SU-30, that was about 40, 45 nautical miles inside their territory. Amazing as it is. And obviously the red on red or the blue on blue, blue as they call it, um, the MI-17 that went down. If this aircraft even was available at that point in time, it would not have made a huge difference. Reason, the gun matters, but the man behind the gun matters more. So, hence said, in my opinion, we would have still shot down, if not equal, well, if not more than equal amount of aircraft in that same point in time. So rest assured, uh, there, is, there is no problem in, in, in facing a Rafael. We've given the devil its due, as I've spoken before, uh, but anti-Rafael tactics are already in vogue uh, in the Pakistan Air Force as we speak. So nothing new for it. Our pilots have seen it fly, maybe have flown it as well in Qatar, because we are instructing their pilots uh, in... Uh, in flying training. So you never know, there are no, we, we may already know its capabilities, which in my opinion we do. Um, it's something which is not very new, back, dates back as I mentioned, 97, 2004, 2006, and it's about 23 years old. Uh, I believe it's, 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 it, it wouldn't have made a huge difference in that one specific skirmish of uh, February 2019. Sir, you're very right about it, uh, because I happened to meet uh, with the uh, uh, former Air Chief of Pakistan, uh, Suhail Aman, back in November 2019, and I discussed with him about the Rafael factor. If Rafael, uh, you know, gets inducted in, uh, uh, in the IAF, and he said, when very first time India talked about Rafael, we already had our homework done for the Rafael. So that means Pakistan's Air Force is far ahead when it comes to IAF doctrines and uh, national security doctrine of the Indians. Now, I have a question. Uh, how would meaningfully uh, contribute the Rafael factor into their doctrines? Uh, let's take this back a little bit. Um, First, firstly, I would like to put in or add on a little, little uh, quote that I live by and the Air Force lives by. Um, it is a very simple one. Uh, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. We've been there, done that. We have lived to fight against our Eastern adversary since 47. So nothing new about it. Um, so that is that. That being that, let let me come to your question very specifically. Let me take you back to uh, the late 90s. George Tanham, uh, a researcher from Rand Corporation USA, uh, put in an article uh, which regarded the IAF doctrine. The Indian Air Force doctrine was zero. There was no doctrine till date. Uh, one of the biggest uh, air forces supposedly in the region, in the subcontinent, uh, intending to be a regional superpower, did not have a doctrine. Uh, the Indian Air Force took it very, well, took it to heart. And they came up with a document and a, and a doctrine that was said. Um, it had a few phrases. It had some good information as well about their plans and their ways of doing things. But uh, one doctrine that was very specific was strategic air defense. I would like to clarify a few aspects. Doctrine specifically defined as ways of doing things is composed of three tiers. One, strategic or the basic air power doctrine. Two, operational doctrine. And third is the tactical doctrine. These three have to be uh, succumbed into this uh, document. In this incident, 2019, March, once again, it's been what, about 20 odd years past that IAF strategic air defense doctrine that came about. 
we didn't see anything happen in the same format. Uh, and coincidentally, it is available on the World Wide Web. You Google Indian Air Force Doctrine, you'll find this document available. Um, so embedding or uh, putting things down on paper is one thing. Uh, and applying it into an air power employment scenario is another. So we really have to understand that this one specific aircraft, the uh, Rafael, hmm, considering uh, the history that the Indian Air Force carries, I don't believe it's going to make a, make a huge difference in case of the doctrine of the Indian Air Force. Sir, now coming to uh, whatever happened at Ladakh, you know it very well that uh, in Ladakh, India got ex exposed and China has already created a sort of a deterrence against the Indians. Indians who were considering themselves as the front line of the US. I mean, you know, everyone knows that there is a proxy war which is going on and it might escalate in the coming future. And India would be considered as the front face of it. So whatever happens, it would be happening to India. So can we say that after, uh, you know, in getting the Raphaels from uh, France, they have sort of like, you know, equalized the scores and they have, uh, you know, succeeded in dying down the factor of uh, whatever happened at Ladakh? Uh, if we specifically relate the PLAAF, which is the Chinese Air Force, as well as the Indians, this is uh, a, a comparison which has been uh, seen on the World Wide Web in the recent past, post Ladakh, at multiple places. May it be YouTube, may it be articles written by varying sides, the, uh, both the sides of the picture. Rafael, in my opinion, yes, is a 4.5 gen aircraft. But the Chinese, as we call the J-20, is a Gen 5 aircraft. Uh, these generations, let, let me clarify one aspect. These generations are uh, categorized unofficially. There's no official documentation on it. The Americans do it their own way, the French, the UK... Uh, the the uh, Chinese and the Russians do their own way. But a few aspects which come into play between 4.5, which is Rafael as considered, and 5, which is J20, is the stealth technology that is there. 4.5 involves uh, super cruise. It has to have an active ESA radar. It has to have a few other things, uh, which are avionics package based. Um, so, in that bargain, the parity that is was expected, the parity that was expected by India by getting these five Rafael aircraft uh, to generate parity with China, I don't think so. Uh, if we look at numbers, uh, Chinese Air Force is the biggest air force in the world in numbers. Uh, on the other hand, the uh, Indian Air Force is about, uh, uh, what, 800-odd uh, fighter aircraft. That's not huge. Uh, we've flown with the Chinese Air Force. Uh, we've seen their capability, competency, as well as uh, effectiveness and efficiency as well. I can certainly vouch uh, that with the tactics that they have devised, and the uh, stratagems that they're operating in, uh, they're no easy nut to crack. It will be a challenging affair uh, for India to come even close, both in quantity as well as quality. So in my opinion, this doesn't equi uh, e uh, well generate uh, parity, as we call it, between the two uh, air forces. Very well, sir. And we could we could always add that the d domestic production, defense production of India, it's almost equal to zero. I mean, they do not, uh, you know, uh, they were working on Tejas since God knows when, <laughs> before Christ, I guess. But nothing has happened in that sense. 
but i i think i think uh, they lack behind uh, you know in in that sense as well and china everyone knows that they have an excellent domestic production uh, whether it's for the air force use or whether it's for the pla anything they they have there is the other the other part of the question which i missed out it's more to clarify that yes there is a uh global economic or a global strategic global political shift which is taking place across the world blocks as we call it are being generated in this case specifically ladakh lay between china and india uh, i would just like to warn uh, india on this if they are expecting the seventh fleet to come it's not coming <laughs> we've had that experience um, we had that several times so don't expect them to come and save you uh, against china it's going to be it's going to be challenging and a fair uh, considering the block now that is being generated geo strategic geopolitically around india which includes us uh iran afghanistan may be a part of it china in the north nepal nepal uh, uh bhutan in the south uh, in the east bangladesh and in the south sri lanka hmm. so don't expect the seventh fleet sir now we come towards another incident and you might agree with my statement that pakistan uh, in post february 2019 scenario pakistan created a sort of uh, aerial deterrence for india when it comes to indo pak conflict so you will agree with this and after uh, getting the rafiles uh, first of all i would say that france must thank pakistan that we forced india to buy their jets yeah <laughs> otherwise yeah. they might be having any no, other different thoughts that's a number yeah and do you think that the uh, that the deterrence factor i'm talking about it's over now or it's still there uh, let's take it back to 2019 feb they lost out two aircrafts one su30 one mig 21 they lost out a combat search and rescue helicopter mi17 uh, they lost out uh, nandu over us uh, over our region and we had to give it give him back in a, as a goodwill gesture nothing more that point in time we were prepared the deterrence that we wanted to generate was generated at uh, at a at a how do i put it at a zero loss of ours uh, if we talk of a to air capability and stand off weapon capability both uh, a to air at that point in time we had the longer stick meaning thereby greater range Uh, with the M120 C5 Amram and the SD10. On the other hand, the Indians had relatively uh, conventional BVRs, so we shot them down. That being one, uh, now the paradigm shift, which is intended by India with the inclusion of this uh, one weapon system or the Rafale, as we call it, the Meteor. mbda meteor missile is very specifically numbered at 150 nautical miles being a fighter pilot and aviator i can tell you one thing these ranges vary with altitude speeds aspects uh, of both the fighter and the target aircraft done so on the other hand this weapon system or uh, the rafale will take its time to get integrated into the indian air force at the tactical scale as well as the operational and attack uh, strategic or the basic air power doctrine level as well uh if we look at the other option here the option that pakistan is exercising and our chief of the air staff has uh, vociferously talked of at different forums one uh, the pl15 is already en route the active electronic scanned array radar of the jf17 block 3 is integrated with this is test flying as we call it in china as well they have a few in uh, the um, in in the test and evaluation flights in pakistan as, as we speak so as and when this 
Raphael with the Meteor is integrated in an air to air OCA, which is offensive counter air, or DCA, which is defensive counter air operations. Pakistan Air Force will already be having the PL 15 comparing ranges once again. Meteor MBDA missile, 150 kilometers, PL 15. 300 kilometers, double the range, once again, varying with regard to different parameters of the tiger target and the fighter aircraft. So that being aside, so this is speaking of the uh, capability of A to A. Deterrence, what we did exactly on 27th morning before we shot down their aircraft was utilized our standoff weapon capability. Uh, which was very specific, the REK on the JF-17 and the uh, H-4 weapons with uh, the Mirage platform. Both aircrafts are having exceptional accuracy. We have been there, done that, practiced again and again. And as the court goes, you fight as you train. We have done it or uh, we had done it, displayed it very specifically on that point in time on their army div or brigade headquarters, making a circle of eight different weapons dropping within about 500 yards of the target itself. So Indians having this Raphael with standoff weapon capability, they have two options. One is the hammer and scalp. They are once again tested in a passive or a downtrodden uh, uh, weapon testing arena, specifically Mali, Afghanistan, Libya, where there's no air defense element involved. So in my opinion, both deterrences that were generated, dictated by the doctrine of the Pakistan Air Force hold valid as soon as uh, the Rafael gets operationalized, as we call it, in their doctrine of doing things, as well as uh, the time once the JF-17 walks in again with their own ammunition on board. Sir, we come to a very important question. Regionally speaking, uh, rather I should uh, say it strategically speaking, you know it very well that Americans, they wanted an ally against the Chinese because they know that world is shifting from the military influence towards the economic influence. And so far, we can simply say that China is heading towards, you know, a win-win race. China is going to win it. But Americans, they want to counter uh, China in the East China Sea and South China Sea. East China Sea, we already know that they have active troops. Uh, in uh, South Korea and in Japan as well. But when it comes to South China Sea, they wanted someone and they got uh, Indians. Uh, back in mm -hmm. while Obama was the president of uh, the US. Since then, we saw that they were getting Shalooks and uh, they were getting, uh, you know, all sorts of uh, uh, importance in terms of their Navy was getting enhanced and it was being cooperated by the US. And now, when we know that uh, uh, India is being kicked out from Iran, Chinese, they have created a counter for the Indians as well because Chinese very well know that India has the ambitions to become SHO on the behalf of uh, USA in the region. So they want to counter it because they have their economic expansions within the region and they want to secure it. So now, once India is out from Chabahar, China has excellently countered them there. Where does the new strategies of the current Indian government are placed? What is their strategy when it comes to security? Are they still going to keep on relying on US or they would turn out to be like, you know, total disaster owing to the fact that everyone knows, you have earlier mentioned as well, that Americans, when it comes to the time, they are never there to help you out. So how do you see it all? 
uh, I utilize a cell. I, I utilize a self-coined phrase. India is presently in a four-pronged pincer. This pincer operation is once again uh, started. Well, very specific. Uh, the uh, 35A and the 370 Anti-Citizenship Act. They've shot themselves in the foot. And they've put themselves in a scenario with it, where there is a four pincer that's coming across for them. One, as you've mentioned, China and Iran throwing out India. Uh, in Afghanistan, NATO specifically said that we do not want India on the negotiation table. So they're heading out from there as well. Um, on the other side, in Leh, Ladakh, what China itself has physically, practically done with India, this is the third one. And the fourth is the internal insecurity matters which are there in India because of the same two laws. Uh, the Dalits, Achuts, Muslims, Christians, they are not considered to be very specifically Indians. They have to prove their, um, prove their worth. So in that domain, India is in a very, very tight corner. Uh, I would rather say that America has, uh, in, in this point in history, chosen the wrong side. I, and I, I will certainly not go too far and say again that India is getting isolated, which in turn they had tried to push Pakistan in that one corner where we couldn't breathe, considering our finances, economic woes that were there, market uh, plummeting, um, the bankruptcy issues. Um, in my opinion, this present government has done one thing at a very, very excessively uh, or an excellent scale, which is foreign policy. That one foreign policy that was pushing us in the corner in the previous two governments, uh, where we did not have a foreign minister, amazingly. On the other hand, this one scenario or this one foreign policy uh, where uh, we are being taken as a major player in the region, if not the world. Talk of the PS752 shooting down in Iran, uh, the escalation between Iran and America. We come in between and try to uh, smoothen out the sand. On the other side, we have Afghanistan. We're an active player there as well. Uh, we talk of Kashmir. We're a player there as well. And obviously, uh, in the recent past, what happened in Lebanon, we've already sent a C-130 with, uh, I don't know, about uh, 40 tons, if I'm not wrong, some amount of uh, aid to them as well. So we're, we're there. India itself is cornering itself instead of anyone else and no one else to blame for the present scenario where they are in geopolitically, geostrategically, as well as uh, the Indian Air Force. Having Rafael uh, by the Indians, uh, what does it matter to the national security, especially when we know that, uh, you know, the U.S., it has given Iran in the plate to the Chinese? Um, let's look at this with a, with a, with a geostrategic uh, viewpoint. China... Uh, has an influence because of the Obor, One Belt, One Road in the region. Uh, with the push that came in for, uh, from uh, Trump on basis of, um, uh, of restrictions on, uh, uh, well, selling and trading oil and a lot of other things on, China, on Iran itself, uh, now the only option that Iranians carried was to take sides uh, with the with China very specifically. National security paradigm dictates that wherever we have four national interests aligned, that is where we would like to be. Palmerston, a uh, very famous British prime minister said, uh, there are no permanent friends nor enemies. 
the only thing that is permanent is national interests for national interests very specifically if i talk of uh, uh, talk of the developed known world are first is defense and security second economic well being third favorable global or regional order fourth and last but not the least is promotion of national value iran falls into china's lap because of three different uh, national interests being aligned with them defense and security being one economic well being being two favorable global regional order being three these three aligned national interests have ensured that national security of iran is ensured if it joins the the chinese bloc we call it cpec in pakistan but over the world there's obor one belt one road so specific national security national interests come together wherever it comes together you're the best of friends and uh, you can be the worst of enemies as well rafael going into the indian side uh, indian air force inducting it in their own uh, in their own uh, air force uh, it doesn't make a huge role in very specific this one paradigm of uh, china and uh, china and iran but it plays an important role in uh, on the national interests between uh, china and india itself so that is how it stays last year november 2019 uh, as i earlier mentioned that i met with the former uh, air chief of pakistan suhail aman and while we were you know having a talk about uh, whatever happened uh, last year i asked him where do we stand and where does iaf stands and he said to me that technically speaking me being a layman when it comes to uh, pakistan uh, when it comes to air force talking about the air force he said to me that technically speaking we are talking about a decade pakistan is a decade ahead of uh, the indian air force i was you know confused about it i just wanted to ask you what does he mean and how does it work out hmm. suhail aman sahab ex chief of the air staff a valiant leader unquestionably uh, major pushes that have gone across in the pakistan air force which we see today uh, are because of his able leadership uh, so once if he says that it is 10 years ahead of our eastern a uh, four uh, i would be very specific in saying technology training and the amount of integration of weapon systems between each other it is a very famous phrase in the uh, developed as well as the developing air forces it's known as network centricity so us the pakistan air force stand ways ahead ways ahead between the uh, between the the capability and network centricity between us and the eastern border sir very last question uh, you will know it better than me that in recent times pakistan russia and china they are turning out to be the key players of the region and they are going to they are going to make a huge difference when it comes to uh, you know us playing the proxy wars in the region or elsewhere so over here how would uh, you know this block this three country block would effect on uh, uh, the the local domestic uh, defense production of pakistan with the assistance of chinese and the russians could we see any further cooperation uh, from the russians in terms of uh, defense production of pakistan owing the fact that we already know that india used to be a strong ally of russia in the past but with the time russians have uh, you know 
realize that India has inclined towards US and we don't see that factor uh, hurdling in front of us. So now could we see that in coming future, we would see further cooperation in terms of defense between Pakistan and Russia? Uh, in my opinion, directly, no. Uh, there will be a, a, a middleman, as we call it, uh, the Chinese, who will be a part of it. Uh, we already have MI-35 Hinds as we speak with the Army Aviation Command, uh, which we are utilizing. It's a good heli or a chopper for the purpose that it is built. Uh, but if we speak of uh, uh, well, collaboration on the military scale in defense production, if I say specifically, I don't think so. Uh, we have our hands full considering China. Um, there are a few projects on the line. Uh, there are a few aspects that need more deliverance. For example, one is the fifth gen aircraft that we are expecting the Pakistan Air Force to generate, which is the Azam project, as we call it. Um, uh, and on the other side, we are also looking at uh, what the Chinese are doing at their own front in, a, in the fifth gen uh, category. And because that is where uh, things are moving. Uh, we have to have a strategic viewpoint of things or the uh, or, or the evolution as the phrase goes there is nothing constant in life but change either be the change or react to it it's an option that we have so being proactive as the air force already is uh, i certainly believe we are looking towards the chinese instead of the russian to uh, to generate this fifth gen maybe even a sixth gen aircraft uh, which is once again uh, a bit far-fetched right now. But uh, before there is science, there is science fiction. Thank you very much, sir. It was a pleasure having you. And I will be calling upon you again and again because it was such an amazing and interesting uh, uh, you know, conversation. And I'm sure uh, my viewers in Pakistan and India, most of the viewers, they are actually in India. Uh, normally, I never get good comments from them, but as long as you know they are watching and leaving a comment, even if it's in my favor or not, I don't care. And throughout the world, people are watching. Thanks ever so much, sir. And with a pledge that we will be together once again. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here, Pestle. Once again, um, I would certainly say that sleep time, the Pakistan Air Force is awake. Hasta la vista. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Zara.